Hello everyone and welcome back to the Slow Car Salon. Now, my Miata is a 1991 model, which is part of that early range of Miatas from 90 to 93 that had no chassis stiffening or bracing at all, which means that over time, especially since my car has now 238,000 miles on it, spot welds have broken within the chassis and everything's starting to feel pretty floppy. And I have that usual 65 mile per hour cowl shake that many users on the forums tend to report. So to cure that, I have the Flying Miata frame rails, as well as their version 2 butterfly brace to throw on the car and hopefully help stiffen everything back up again and make it feel like new. So let's get started. So to get started, we've got to jack up the car, both the front and the rear, get it up on all fours, and actually put the top down so we can access bits of the interior because we're gonna have to pull back the carpet. So we're gonna start with that. All right, the car is jacked up on all fours. We got plenty of room to work underneath the car. And now to come back to the interior. So what we gotta do in order to access the carpet and get that all out of the way is take out the seats on both sides, take out the door sills along both sides. There's four screws to take out here. And in case the kick panels underneath the dash here and on the passenger side, or even the trim back here by the seat belts is continuing to hold everything in. We may have to take that, all that out. The seat belt uh, fastener down here has to come out too though. But once we can get that out of the way and the carpet can be kind of peeled up from the side and suspended over the center console and we can try to hold that together with some bungee cords or something like that to keep the carpet out of the way of the metal on the floor. That way when we're drilling from underneath to fit those frame rails, we don't end up drilling through the carpet. So let's continue with that. Okay, yikes. A lot more crud under these seats than I anticipated. I think I'm gonna have to clean that out first. Obviously we have some mildew or mold growing here, which is even more disgusting, but that kind of tells me uh, we've had some water intrusion here, which is not great. So definitely gonna have to do a little cleaning session before pulling all the rest of this stuff out. Now I should note that I had uh, headrest speakers at one point, so I had some wires running to the seats, but those have, have not worked for a very, very long time, so I just cut the wires and I'm not gonna be running headrest speakers in the future anyways, so that's fine. Now time to clean things up and remove the seat belt buckles here, one on this end and one on that end, which I have an eye bolt there for uh, some, and another bracket down there for some uh, racing harness loops to click into. And then door sills are next, and then carpet should be able to come right out. All right, the carpet's been moved out of the way on both sides here. Now, I did run into a couple of issues here on the driver's side because I had to remove the dead pedal there to the left of the clutch in order to get the carpet out of the way. And another interesting thing is because of the water intrusion that has occurred with my car over the past few years is that when I pulled the carpet up, the jute padding underneath the carpet sort of stuck to the floor and I had to kind of carefully peel it up and out of the way. Now, I'm not too worried because the frame rails, I think, run along about this section here. So this is just about out of the way enough, I think. I'm not really too concerned about damaging the carpet too much because I have floor mats that go over the front sections anyways. Plus, it may be time in the near future for a new carpet, new jute padding, all that kind of good stuff. Now this is pretty much ready to go, so we can now turn our attention underneath the car. Now, a couple of initial notes to make is you'll see how my frame rails are pretty bashed up on this side and same is true of the other side. Now, what, they, what happens when this occurs is that the width here kind of changes and the width margin on the frame rails is pretty small. So I may have, end, have, end up having to bash the frame rails a little bit more narrow um, in order to let the frame rails slide up and over uh, with the sledgehammer. However, I don't think that should be a big deal, but that is definitely uh, step number one here in terms of making sure the frame rails will fit up properly. And now coming back under the car and getting a better look at things, I foresee this ding right here to be a huge issue because the width changes significantly across here. And it's on the inside too, which is even more annoying than uh, since a bash that's on the outside of the frame rail. So that's going to be interesting, but I should definitely try to test fit the frame rail to see if this is even a huge issue because it does kind of bend out, but then like inwards a whole lot because it's sort of like curled up in here. Same goes uh, on the other side over there. Kind of a similar humongous dent in my frame rail. But yeah, I think next up I should that I should get the frame rails, fit them up and see how they do. Wow. 
Wow, okay, the amount of effort it took just to fit one side was insane. But just in terms of bashing the stock frame rail in order to get this to fit, although this now has a decently tight interference fit because it's holding in place without me having to jack it up or support it or anything like that, which is actually kind of nice. I did have to shift the uh, lateral position a little bit. Sorry, that's not the right word. Forward and back position, this axis. I uh, shift that position a little bit because I mocked up the front brace, which ties into this point here, as well, and then into the subframe bolts over there, just to make sure this was lined up properly. And then I'll have to make sure that matches on the other side. That's kind of the only crucial factor here. Because I'm installing the butterfly braces as well, the positions of these rails is also crucial. So I'm actually rather thankful that these are being held in with some interference. Now the passenger side is going to be interesting because I'm going to have to move the lines out of the way there, the fuel and brake lines, as well as move and modify those brackets because they will not be bolted into the same position. You'll notice that uh, on this side, the frame rails have these little studs and that's where those brackets will be bolted into uh, for the fuel and brake lines. So first I'm going to remove those lines on this side, drop them out of the way, smash the frame rail with the sledgehammer, get it all out of the way, reshaped, reformed, and then try to slide the rail back on. And I think I'm going to use this measurement here from this little uh, pocket here on the frame and I'll use a little measurement from perhaps the edge of here to the edge of this point on the frame in order to give myself some kind of reference in order to make sure that this is lined up the same as it is on the other side it may not be the best datum point but it is a start and I'm not sure well, let's see what about this side no not as useful either way I think this is what I'm going to have to work with Okay, wow, the passenger side was even worse to get in just because of how badly mushroomed the frame rail was, especially now having to deal with those fuel and brake lines. It was a pain to get, but thankfully bits of wood and the sledgehammer kind of took care of that, and I was just barely able to get it clearance, and I had to sort of sledgehammer the frame rails in in order to get them to fit, but it fits just so. I was able to bolt up the front brace, as I said, and make sure it was all lined up. Uh, with the datum point that I mentioned earlier, I measured one in seven six inch on both sides so that let me know they were even plus the fact that the front brace bolted up just fine uh, was also a good indicator so now I, I've because because of how well these are interference fit into the frame rails I still have to drill and put all the bolts through but that'll be pretty much trivial at this point and then yeah bolting the rear brace in with the two bolt holes back here and the same deal on the other side will also be trivial just making sure that the uh, that it'll clear the exhaust there because if not then I may have to to look at and make sure and I get a tighter hanger so that it pulls the exhaust up and out of the way but I believe it should clear just based on the way it looks by eye here anyways that's where I'm at now and back to time lapse so I can get it all wrapped up and one final note to make before getting back under the car is I've got myself a 5 16 inch drill bit. This is equivalent to about 7.9 millimeters. This will accommodate all of the hardware that was provided by Flying Miata. Now, just to note that there are six bolts that are much shorter than all the rest, and these are meant to go on the inside of the passenger rail where all of the fuel and brake lines go. So just put them aside and make sure that you are putting them in that, that specified location. Otherwise, for all the rest, make sure that you have the bolt, and then a washer to go on the interior side of the car, and then to go through the chassis, and then another washer for the underside, and a nut to go on top of that. Alright, I'm running out of light. Can't see what I'm doing under there. I think I'll resume tomorrow. Alright, we have light again, so it's time to continue.
But just before that, I want to take us back to these little brackets here that are holding in all of those hard lines underneath the car. Now, we need to get this into the vise so that we can flatten this end of the bracket here so that way these portions are parallel with this. Now, in order to get the plastic hanger out of the bracket, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a like T or like plus sign uh, part of the molding here. And the way this comes out is very, very simple. You just have to twist this. Now you'll get this to a point where the T will be di completely diagonal with the hole. And from there, you can just push it out and that will leave you with two plastic free metal brackets. Now on the vise, get it like that. And then just basically, uh, we'll start with the hole, bolt hole for the bracket first and flatten that out. And then well, we can, I guess if in this case, you can either cut this off or in this case, just flatten it as well. That'll probably be the easiest way to do it. I'm just going to flatten both and then I'll flatten you know, both the brackets in the vise. And then that way this will, this bolt hole will slot into the small stud that's on the frame rail. There we go, that'll do it. So now just the same with the little hook here. Easy. And there we go. Just gotta rinse and repeat for the other one. And then note when we put these back in, they only go in one way because there's a little locator pin on the plastic tab and a little hole in the bracket. So that'll slot in in this orientation and then rotate like that to lock in place. All right, my goodness, the passenger side is finally done. I swear, because of these lines, it makes things so difficult to get everything in on the inside. Now, because I was having an issue with the frame rail here, uh, mushrooming out on the side, and I couldn't get the frame rail all the way on first, what I ended up doing was actually getting one of the longer bolts from the stash, putting it through the bottom, tightening it from the top, and that sort of pulled the rail against the chassis which then allowed me to do up all the rest because it was kind of I was kind of running into an issue where the bolt was kind of short and I wasn't able to get the nut on the end of it so that helped bring the frame rail closer than I was able to progressively do all the rest and that helped a lot so that's really nice now the driver's side uh, is just going to repeat of this side however we don't have to deal with lines so it's going to be a hell of a lot easier and just a note, I did end up Loctiting these bolts. However, the bolts for the cross member here, I did not Loctite because I imagine that as you service the car, you'd want to take this on and off fairly easily, so no Loctite there. Anyways, onwards. it up the rear brace is in and that is pretty much it under the car the only issue that I have left is this exhaust hanger here because the exhaust is hitting against the rear brace see if I can induce the noise yeah there is some contact there sadly so I might have to get a new uh, rubber hanger maybe a polyurethane one or just something that's a little tighter than that in terms of fit so that's something to uh, deal with very soon but other than that, the rest of it is in, all torqued down, and now the interior is ready to put back together. So I'm about to go for a test drive and 
I don't know if you can hear that, but the exhaust rattle is pretty significant. So I think my first test drive will be down to O'Reilly so I can get a new exhaust hanger, get that sorted out sooner than later, but also allow me to give the car a whirl now that it's all frame stiffened. So how exciting. Let's get driving. Okay, gotta say, this is pretty amazing. Even going over a couple of bumps, I can already tell how much stiffer the chassis is. The cowl shake has been significantly reduced, although I will say it is still there just a little bit, but oh my God, it is so much better. Tourists. All right, well, I gotta say, feels like at least 100,000 miles have been taken off the clock of the car. Even going up a little uh, angled driveway up into the O'Reilly store parking lot, I just felt how much stiffer and how much less deflection there was in the chassis as the car went over that. So it's absolutely amazing. I will say it will ha hasn't eliminated all the rattles and cowl shake if, unless there's like really significant rough roads or bumps, but it has helped a lot. Don't get me wrong. All right, let's get that exhaust hanger. looking at alternate locations. The help section. Help, give me a rubber exhaust hanger. Uh, I have to try another store. Damn it. Found some. Awesome. This O'Reilly's had it. Thanks O'Reilly's. Please sponsor me. Well, what a change the butterfly brace has made. So much so that I have to adjust my suspension settings now because the car is a little too stiff in the sense that uh, now I'm kind of picking a wheel up off the ground and it induces a lot of push through the corner. So thankfully I still have adjustment room in my shocks so I can dial it back a little bit. But in general, it's just such a transformative experience going from loose chassis to, oh, now the car actually can feels like it's holding itself together. So that's really cool. All right, well, now that the car's back home and it's cooled down a little bit, I'm going to get back under there and replace the exhaust hanger. I might just do the one, um, rather, I might not just do the one that's under there uh, causing the rattling issue, but I'm going to see if there's a couple other hangers near the muffler that I can change too. So, I'm going to jack this up. All right, hangers replaced. Uh, I don't know if I can get a really good vantage here, but it seems like I've yielded me about a quarter of an inch of clearance there. Right around there. There we go. So hopefully that'll solve it. If not, then I'll have to move to some polyurethane hangers because those will be a little bit tighter. Anyway, let's start her up and see how she sounds. Okay, car is on. No more rattle, yay. Okay, let's put the car back down. Anyways, that's it for this video. Um, later on, maybe I'll install some uh, fender braces or a strut bar or something of the sort. Maybe add some more stiffness in certain areas because I think those are the last sort of areas where you can add stiffness to the chassis and then it becomes a point of sort of diminishing returns at that point, even with like the PPF brace in the back or like the rear subframe cannon brace or something like that, so who knows. Anyways, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.